Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got a early impression of a perfume that one of my fairy god uh, people, Eddie, uh, goes under the name Jomathan B. Swift, sent to me very kindly. Uh, this is a very hard to find, long sold out, uh, Russian Adam Jewel, and it's called Santal Galore. So we're going to do an early impression on this, but before we do, uh, I actually have an unboxing. And it's an unboxing from a house called Aton Perfumes. I don't know if you guys have heard of this house before, uh, but it's run by a young man uh, who is actually the brother, I believe it's the brother-in-law of uh, Russian Adam. I'm not 100% sure if it's the brother, brother-in-law, but uh, they are connected some way through family. And um, this young man created uh, a fragrance with Russian Adam called Manly. And if you actually go on my channel uh, under the Arige Ladore playlist, you can find the initial impression of Manly. I liked it. I didn't love it. Uh, it wouldn't be one of my first Arige Ladores that I would want to buy, but it is a good perfume with a, a beautiful tobacco absolute note in there, um, amongst other things, of course. But um, let's unbox the sample set that his... Um, that I'm gonna, I'm gonna say brother-in-law, I think it's his brother-in-law, but I'm not 100% sure, um, that, um, that he sent to me. Uh, so, Aton is about 20, 21 years old. I think he's a young man. And let's pull out the sample, shall we? Let's see what we have here. Okay, there you go, Aton Perfumes. Um, Let's check these out. There is really turning into a queue of uh, samples for me to go through, boy. All right, let's open this. What do we get? What do we get? It's like Christmas on Channel Ramsey. Ooh, a nice little pouch. This must be how his sample set comes in. Nice little pouch. Uh, dare to be different is what it says down on the bottom and you can see his little logo it looks like the face of a person between the Aton and perfumes dare to be different I like the little pouch that's a nice little touch and let's open this up shall we let's see what we get okay so the first one is actually a fragrance that I am most uh, excited to try from the brand. And this is called Roxbury. It reminds me of like Night at the Roxbury, but look at the color of that juice. I love the dark juices. Um, and Roxbury is heavy, dark, sophisticated, uplift your spirit, take you in the and take you in the mature world of fragrance. The main players in this fragrance are Indian patchouli, tobacco, uh, and oud, and spices. Uh, and it says that, um, it says, in Roxbury we used vintage uh, charactered patchouli that was aged in a traditional camel leather bottle for 24 years. Outrageous. The leather bottle where patchouli was stored was has the property of, of absorbing moisture and preserves oil in the best way. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. Um, this highly matured, exceptional, and rare type of patchouli contributed to a bottomless depth and unmatchable complexity of the composition. With its help, dark, mysterious notes of vintage oud was skillfully created without actual use of oud. Very interesting. Um, Roxbury is definitely the one I'm most excited to try. So these samples are big enough that obviously I can wear them as my scent of the day one day and talk about them on the channel. Okay, next. Next we are going to do the bright lights. The bright lights. I, I think there's only three from this brand. This is a new brand, obviously. Like I said, he's a young guy. He's a young man. Uh, the bright lights kick off with some beautiful sharpness from cedarwood, oud, and pink pepper. 
Then you enjoy earthy patchouli merging with sandalwood that gives a fragrance a little creaminess. Incense starts to announce itself in the background. Likewise, vanilla. And on the dry down, a fragrance becomes bold with some rough edges from the oud. Unique and overwhelming. Uh, so each one of these is listed as 53 mil. So my guess is um, maybe there's 60 mil bottles that he fills up a couple mils more. I'm not sure. I know Andy Tower does that. Or 55 mil bottles that he fills up maybe a little bit more than just 50. Um... It says, in bright lights, we use Thai oud that comes from Trat, a province of Thailand. Oud has a soft, sweet smell and was aged for over six years. Okay, so this is uh, the bright lights. I'm guessing it's not going to be as dark as Roxbury. Roxbury, by the way, is $250 for um, 53 mils. The bright lights is um, $190 for 53 mils. And uh, finally, we have Pachule Lave. Pachule Lave, I guess is how you pronounce that. Um, Pachule Lave, a sweet, fresh start with some powdery touches from the opening. You start to enjoy the cardamom and tonka bean mixed with a flower champaka. Then Pachule and oak moss add some depth to the scent. Going further, we enjoy the dry down with white musk, which gives a scent even more of a floral taste. Uh, in patchouli lava, we use an Indian flower called magnolia champaka. Unlike white magnolia, champaka has a deep silky smell that reminds us of tea, spices, and floral notes. Absolutely interesting. Um, cannot wait to dive into these. I have so many interesting samples that I can't wait to smell. So that is the um, first little unboxing of the samples from Aton Perfumes. Thank you, Aton. I really do appreciate it, my friend. I uh, can't wait to dive into these. It will be a pleasure and an honor. And I think uh, whenever we did the ingredients breakdown, I think there was a patchouli note that Russian Adam mentioned that um, is used beautifully in patchouli lave. I can't remember which patchouli it was, but it was one of the patchoulis. And uh, he said, if you want to smell it done very well in a composition, check out patchouli lave. And here it is. It's in my hand. So can't wait to smell that. Can't wait to smell all three. Um... I think this young man has a very bright future ahead of him. Obviously, at 20 years old or 21 years old, he probably has a lot to learn. But heck, I mean, perfumers that have been doing it for decades have learned stuff every day, I'm sure. So as long as he has an open mind, I have a feeling he has a very bright future ahead of him. All right, I'm going to put these away, so bear with me. Um, where, where, where are you going to live? Where's, your, where's going to be your new home, Aton Perfumes? Okay. You can live next to the Ensar Oud sample pack. How about that? All right. Uh, let us get to the reason for the video, uh, other than the unboxing. And that is Santal Galore. Now, um, I've got notes on this one because I've been wearing it all day today. And... Um, this is a, I'm going to do a fresh spray just because this is an absolutely amazing fragrance. I love this fragrance and it's perfect for summer for me. Um, even though it's dark, I mean, look at the color of the juice. That's a proper Arige Ladore color juice, you know, Russian Adam juice color. Uh, I love these dark juices. Oh God. Okay. So, this fragrance, again, was sent to me by Eddie. Thank you very much. Uh, that's more than kind of you. This is a true unicorn now. Very hard to come by. Came out a couple years ago. And Santal Galore um, is an absolutely stunning perfume. Like, it knocked me back uh, with how beautiful it is in all facets. And um, it almost has this mountaintop experience to it. So, when I was a kid... I remember um, I was raised Catholic, and I remember a priest once told me that God will show you a mountaintop experience in your life to give you something to basically strive for. You know what I mean? This perfume, as far as summer sandalwood fragrances go, is a mountaintop experience in perfumery. I'm not just saying that because I'm friends with Russian Adam. I was actually telling him today in a voice message that I was, I was thinking... Um, while I was, you know, sitting in the shower today, and all of a sudden I started thinking, you know, 
I've often said that these Ensar Oud or uh, Sultan Pasha's creation with um, uh, Civet de Nuit or, you know, Russian Adams fragrances like Antiquities remind me of vintage Guerlain's or vintage perfumes in general. And I was thinking, I wonder if it's because of the fact that uh, they used real ingredients back in the day, you know, that uh, in the 1910s, 1920s, 1930s, when houses like Lanvin were creating stuff like Arpege and stuff like that, there were no major oil houses uh, that made, you know, just bucket loads, bathroom tub size of, you know, fake oud, fake saffron, fake vetiver, even fake vetiver. In my video yesterday, I said that all vetiver in perfume is natural. Uh, and that's what I thought. I thought it was. It's not. Um... There are synthetic vetiver compounds now, like vetiviral acetate and stuff like that. That's been around for a long time, apparently, 50, 60 plus years. Um, but I'm just thinking in my head, like, I wonder if it's because they used real ingredients back in the day. Whenever um, they used rose, there weren't synthetic molecules impersonating rose. They used rose. Or whenever they used oak moss, it wasn't an oak moss substitute. It was oak moss, you know, that kind of stuff. And here, oh God, this is so, it's so perfect for summer for me. Okay, so here's what's amazing about this. This is a fruity chifra. Um, that's the way that the Arige Ladore website describes it. A classical fruity chifra with a one-of-a-kind durian accord. Now, um, durian, if you know what durian is, it is this spiky-looking fruit, okay? I don't think I've ever actually uh, had a chance to taste it. Uh, I should. I should try to go get some from Chinatown or something. Uh, but durian has this um, uniqueness to it, okay? It has this custard-like uh, taste, apparently, is what I've read. But it has a... Um, so whenever you think of classic perfumes, right, what are ingredients that you think of in the very opening of a fragrance that you get normally. You normally get stuff like what? Lemon, lime, bergamot, stuff like that. There's a fragrance that I really uh, enjoyed and there's a couple perfumes now that have started to use the note of uh, citron, citron fruit. Uh, and this is one of them. This is Amouage's Imitation Man. Look at the dent, that's my dent. That is my dent in this bottle. Um, and I've worn the shit out of this fragrance. Oh, and I just love it to death. The iris in this is so beautiful. There's this castorium leather accord. But the opening is citron fruit, um, which is unique and different. And I absolutely love that. This has a... Santal Galore has a durian opening. And it, it opens... Almost in a way that if you're a Western nose, you've never smelled anything like this before. This is completely unique. Uh, and I love the concept. I love the creativity. It's almost like an, a piece of art, you know. It's it's like watching an artist create. Uh, and you get that in that opening because durian is so uh, unique. You know, it's so different. It has this creamy custard-like vibe. And uh, when you mix that creamy custard almond, almost like this crushed nut, you know, like almond milk, okay? So this almond milk-like vibe mixes with the, and there is Mysore sandalwood in this, by the way. This is a true uh, sandalwood lover's dream. I think it's actually comes in a box that looks like it's like, um, like it's almost like cut out of a piece of a tree. You know, it's, that's how it's showing on the website anyways. Excuse me. And um, so when you mix the creaminess of the durian fruit with the just silky smooth, I mean buttery smooth Mysore sandalwood, um, you get this absolutely stunning opening. Gorgeous. And why and 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 um I'll get to some of the details of the fragrance, but uh, the reason that I say that I think this is a perfect Arise Ladore for summer is there's no Oud note listed. And, um, you know, even though this may be somewhat challenging to the average nose, I'm not seeing any Castorium, I'm not seeing any Civet listed. Uh, if you wanted to wear like a beautiful Arise Ladore fragrance for summer, 
Santal Galore would be probably one of my top picks so far right now. Uh, and that durian opening is so unique. Now, durian has, a, has another unique feature to it in that uh, they're known as the quote-unquote smelliest fruits in, fruit in the world. That's basically, if you look up what is the smelliest fruit in the world, durian is at the top of the list. Uh, and it almost has this, um, it's been described, again, I've never smelled an actual durian, I've never tasted one, but it's been described as smelling of sewage, raw sewage, um, rotting flesh, people have described it as, or smelly gym socks, okay? Now, um, so they even have such a pungent, off-putting smell that they've actually been banned from being sold in markets in places like Malaysia and Singapore. So if you just close your eyes and imagine how an opening to a Russian atom animalic oud fragrance would smell, um, minus the oud, okay? So what's so genius about this to me is that you do get a little bit of funk in the opening, but it's obviously not from the oud, unless he used a little bit of oud and didn't list it, but he's usually very honest about listing ingredients, so I doubt that's the case. Um, but imagine if you close your eyes and imagine there's almost this oud accord, all right, but there isn't one, and what gives it this very early, um, you know, little bit of funk, little bit of dirtiness in the opening, and I've said it before, my favorite fragrances uh, initially should shock you. They should put you off. You know, one of the most famous perfumers in the world said that all good fragrances should challenge you in the opening. They should almost offend you in the opening. <laughs> this doesn't offend me, but I can definitely appreciate the beauty and the art in this because of the fact that it's so different, and there is a little bit... For the first couple minutes, my nose and my mind were almost trying to pin down what it is that's giving off that animalic funk. And my guess is it's a mixture of the durian, because if it's the stinkiest fruit in the world, we're talking about the smell, right, of a durian and a, and a perfume. It's probably going to be, some of that's probably going to be there. Or it's the natural deer musk. Yes, there is natural deer musk in this. And... If you go back and watch my Russian Adam interviews, which there are now two, and one is an hour and 45 minutes, the second one is four hours, it's worth every single second of your time. Put the interview on one and a half times speed and just watch them all. I'm telling you, they are absolutely filled, brim to the brim filled with information. Probably the best things I've ever put on YouTube. Uh, that and the Liz Moore's interviews are, are my two favorites so far. Um, and... He mentioned in that interview that he was very uh, saddened, almost, um, you know, disappointed that even going back 50, 100, 110 years ago, they weren't using real deer musk in, in fine French perfumery. You know, those old Guerlains are not using real deer musk. They're using a synthetic deer musk even back then. Uh, real deer musk is hardly ever used because it's so rare uh, all of the musk pods that were, you know, acquired by Russian Adam were acquired legally and ethically and all that stuff. Uh, and here you get a deer musk pod tincture, okay? So you get this deer musk pod tincture, real deer musk, um, real Mysore sandalwood. Imagine the quality of the ingredients we're talking about here. This very unique Malaysian Musang King Durian uh, fruity type opening, but in a way you've never smelled before. I uh, very, uh, I can't think of a single perfume that uses a durian note that I know of from my vocabulary of just designer sense. Okay. It's obviously not something that is either palatable to the Western noses or for whatever reason, they never made a synthetic version of it and they're not going to use the real thing. Right. Um, and this handcrafted sandalwood extract that just smells so buttery, so smooth, you know, almost like you can just take your fingers and just squash the sandalwood down, you know, almost like it's almost like you can just take a piece of sandalwood and just squish it down like it's a piece of foam. You know, it has that buttery, silky, um, don't think about the smell of velvet or suede, but think about the texture of suede. 
Like, have you ever seen like suede shoes or something and you rub your hand this way and the suede kind of particles all go that way and you rub it the other way and the suede particles kind of move the other way? That's the texture of this fragrance. <laughs> it's silky smooth. I mean, smooth operator fragrances is, is the way that I think about this. Um, and um, so this, this real deer musk Accord, it is, you can't recreate it. I've smelled both. Russian Adam sent me both. He sent me the real deer musk. He sent me um, synthetic deer musk. And uh, I have real deer musk fragrances by Bortnikov. I've showed off Musk Habib before, which is one of my favorites. Top three for sure. Uh, I've sampled a couple of real deer musk fragrances. Like, for example, this is one of my favorite. Uh, this is War and Peace. This uses real deer musk. Um, what does it say here? Co-absolute of deer musk. Uh, and I also smelled Siberian musk uh, by Russian Adam. And Siberian musk also uses real deer musk. So... My point in saying all that is I have some experience in real deer musk. I also have experience uh, with synthetic deer musk. This is, uh, obviously, these big niche brands aren't going to use real deer musk, but this is Musk Tonkin. This is one of my favorite synthetic deer musk creations of all time. This is so good. I don't think, I don't think it gets better than this. I mean, for me, this is probably my number one just deer, synthetic deer musk creation. Uh, Musk Kublai Khan Vintage is good, but it challenges me. Uh, I have problems wearing that. Uh, you could buy Kiehl's Original Musk. Again, that one might be a little more boring. Uh, go, you know, if you want more interesting animalic Musk Kublai Khan, or of course you could try um, uh, Musk's Ravageur by Frederick Mall, which, again, Frederick Mall's not using real deer musk, period. Uh, it It is... Um, uh, it's going to be a synthetic of some sort, but that one's very good, especially if you can get the vintage matte cap version. It smells a little bit more animalic. The new one smells a little bit more gourmand, a little bit sweeter, almost like you're at a Cinnabon or something. Um, and there's there's others that, that I've talked about that you can maybe try to look for, like, um, oh, let's see, this is one no one talks about. This is a rose oud with a very interesting musk profile. I'm not a huge fan of this brand, mostly because she's a very litigious person. She sued multiple people on YouTube for saying things that she didn't like. How sensitive, you know? Uh, but I do think this is a good fragrance. This is actually a pure parfum. This is 100 mils of a pure parfum. Insane. Um, but it's, uh, it's very strong and... Um, the musk accord here is very unique. It's it's a musk, it's a synthetic musk like I've never smelled one. And um, so obviously she's not using real deer musk. Don't sue me and say you are. Uh, you know, I'm yeah. If you're gonna claim you're using real deer musk in here, I, I would almost be willing to fight that battle in court. Because I would love to see you prove that you're using real deer musk in here. Uh, I just don't think modern brands are using real deer musk. The only places you're going to see real deer musk is with brands like Arige Ladore. Um, it's with brands like Bortnikov, uh, maybe Meleg. You know, those kind of indie brands are going to be able to use the real deer musk in small because they're not IFRA compliant, you know, stuff like that. Um, but the deer musk here, the reason I bring all this up is I have experience with both synthetic and the real thing. And the real thing creates this um, creates this uh, beautiful, um, fluffy, powdery, cloudy, you know, almost like, imagine like fluffy cumulus clouds rolling in. Um, that is the feel of musk, but it just surrounds you, you know, it's, it, it's, it's just such a beautiful, comforting, unique ingredient. Um, and you really notice the loss of it in modern synthetic perfumery when you smell stuff like this. You just notice it just can't be, it just, you just cannot recreate what real deer musk does, um, when you go smell the synthetics. And there are some good synthetics. 
like I just mentioned, this is a good one. This is probably my favorite, this Must Tonkin. Um, even though, again, I don't like the brand, this is a good one. This Signature by um, Bond Number no. 9. Uh, and, of course, there's many other musk fragrances that you can find, like I said. But the real stuff just adds this... Um, it, it adds this pillowy... Um, this, you know, whipped cream... You know, it's, it's very whipped cream to me. That's a great way to describe what real musk feels like in a composition. Imagine if you took, like, a can of Ready Whip, flipped it over, and just squirted it out, and how... You know, it looks, when it when it comes out of the can, you put it on top of a piece of pie or something, it looks kind of whole, right? But then as the foam and air starts to kind of compress, it starts to melt and melt and melt. That's what, that fluffiness, that texture, that's what real musk feels like to me. And they say that the bed of heaven is made out of real musk. Uh, that's what Russian Adam once told me. And um, I, I completely see why. That type of beautiful... You know, you can just imagine just a beautiful ingredient. And then you finally get to the spices. And the spices here are just perfectly blended. There's no spices that are, um, that seem uh, to be piercing or out of place or everything is just, everything has its place, okay? And you get this, um, you get this vintage cassia accord, he, he lists, and clove. And those are two spices that can be, you know, um, especially cassia can come across as very pissy. and But it just blends with the real musk, with the durian. Um, there's real oak moss in this. There's tonka. Not the sweet, disgusting tonka that you get from, you know, things like this. This is disgusting sweet uh, to me. I don't like the Tonka in Feb Delicious, that gloopy. Oh. It's just, after smelling the real thing, I can't like this. I just can't. I think Guerlain's Tonka Imperial is probably uh, closer to what the real Tonka Accord gets. But the Tonka here is not sweet. It smells like the real thing Russian Adam sent me. Uh, it just is such a beautiful fragrance. And that Mysore Sandalwood, you know... Um, the star of the show. Mysore Sandalwood is the star of the show here. As beautiful as all those other ingredients I mentioned are, the Mysore Sandalwood here just steals the show in just a quiet, um, you know, you ever heard Russian Adam speak? And he's just very soft-spoken, and he's, um, you know, he's, he's very kind and gentle. That's what the Mysore Sandalwood adds to this composition. Most people think, Oh, sandalwood, Mysore sandalwood. Oh my God, it's going to be a beast. No, you know, sandalwood is a very uh, low-key, relaxing, calming ingredient. It's not a shouter. It's not, not loud. Just because it's Mysore sandalwood, it's not going to turn it up on a volume level from a 5 to a 10. In fact, it doesn't change the volume of the fragrance at all. If regular sandalwood... Indian sandalwood that's not Mysore or Australian sandalwood or whatever it is uh, would leave it at a five, right? Uh, the fragrance is going to be at a five, even if it's Mysore. It's just the, the Mysore adds this creamy, butteriness to the fragrance, um, you know, that you, you don't get in other sandalwood blends. Some of them are harsher. Some of them are more metallic. Uh, some of them are pickle-like. They almost have this pickle-like smell. Uh, Mysore sandalwood just has this beautiful, buttery, silky, smooth. Again, smooth operator. This is a smooth operator fragrance. Um, this is someone that doesn't care if they, you know, get noticed for the fragrance. They wear the fragrance for themselves. If someone notices, great. If not, they don't care. You know, they're wearing this for themselves. That's the feeling that this fragrance gives me. It's not a look at me, I'm wearing a, an Arise Adore, uh, and I'm better than you. No, it's someone that's very honorable and kind and somebody that um, knows who they are, very relaxed, 
nothing you know puts them in a tense mood that's the vibe this fragrance gives me my source sandalwood or most good quality sandalwood in general gives me that vibe because um sandalwood has this very calming effect on me you know it has this very um Imagine you're running around doing everything. Imagine you wake up and you just have the shittiest day, right? You you wake up and you can't find one of your shoes and then you realize your car has a flat and then, you, you know, all this bad stuff happens. It rains on you on the way to work and all this stuff. If you applied sandalwood, real good quality sandalwood, everything would just be like a deep breath. You know, it's like an inhale, exhale. That's what that's what real sandalwood does in a composition. It's just very calming, smooth, collected, uh, that kind of thing, you know. And so uh, this has one of the the most beautiful sandalwood accords I've ever smelled. It it has so far lasted about seven hours on my skin easily. I mean this 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 smells like I just sprayed it. It's seven hours old. This is about an hour old. And oh my God, the musk and the the fruitiness from that durian. I mean, this is special fragrance. And again, um, the uh, final accord in this that I haven't even had a chance to talk about is the floral heart. There is a little bit of a floral heart. Uh, it's Turkish rose water, rose accord from circa 1925. I don't know what that means. I can tell you there is some rose that... Russian Adam sent me from, um, from, uh, uh, from 1973 from Azerbaijan that, um, that smelled, uh, very unique, uh, a little bit fruity. And, you know, during our conversation, Russian Adam was saying that most people believe as the years tick by that Rose gets less and less, it's not like Oud where it, continues to uh, mature as it sits. Rose is considered to lose some of its qualities, but that 1973 Azerbaijan rose he sent me was absolutely beautiful. So a rose from 1925, um, you know, most perfumers would probably think that it would completely lose its touch, but here it smells, it does have this vintage smell to it. You know, it has this bottled up, um, almost like uh, alcoholic, you know, almost like you've um, almost like you've let brandy sit in a cask, in a, in a, in an oak barrel or something. That's what the Rose Accord smells like to me. And this Osmanthus note, Osmanthus is an interesting note because it also has these little touches, these little floral peach like touches. Okay. So it, it's a, it's, it's, it's obviously it's a flower, uh, but it has this nectarine like vibe to it. And when you mix the nectarine with the durian, you're just left with the most amazing fruity chiffre you could imagine. Uh, this is, again, stunning stuff. And um, I know uh, Rudy, Time to Musk Up, was telling me he tried to get Russian Adam to do a second version of this. And I would concur with that. I think this is amazing stuff. You can see the durian fruit almost like sticking to the side of the decant that was sent to me. Look at that. You can almost see the durian fruit sticking to the side. It's it's amazing. Um, and so uh, that is my early impression on Santal Galore. I wish I, I, I literally thought and thought and thought about what I'm going to say bad about this fragrance because Russian Adam told me many a times, like, speak your mind, tell the truth, right? Um, the best thing an artist can hear is, uh, constructive criticism. <sighs> I couldn't think of a single thing. I mean, um, maybe, maybe the usual criticism that, you know, there, there aren't bottles available, but I mean, that's just the way it's going to be. These small batch creations are going to be rare and there's only going to be a certain amount of bottles available and, and, and that's that. Um, but honestly, I mean, I, I can't think of a single, I can't think of a single thing that I can turn around and say, yeah, this needs to be improved. That needs to be improved. I mean, this, I'm just like, uh, I'm just like a fan sitting here watching, watching an artist work. And 
this is a joy and a pleasure to get to experience. So, um, I mean, I wish I had more than that, but look how generous of a size decant Eddie sent me. You know, that is very, very kind of him, especially on something like this that's so rare. So, that's my uh, early impression. I hope you enjoyed learning about the brand Aton. You know, he worked with Russian Adam on Manly, and uh, now he has his own brand. So, I'm going to do early impressions. I have so many, so many early impressions to do. You guys have no idea. Mostly because of the kindness from you guys. I mean, I've got samples from all kind of people have sent me stuff. Uh, and so if you've sent me stuff and I haven't gotten to it yet, please be patient. There's so many. I mean, there's a queue. I could probably go from now until next March, uh, just doing new every single day, just doing a new sample first impression. You know, I, I literally have that many. I could probably go six months. Okay. So, uh, if you've sent me stuff, please be patient. If it doesn't happen right away, it will happen at some point. It's just a matter of when, whether it's tomorrow or a year from tomorrow, I don't know, but I will get to it for the, for the, for the brands, the people like, uh, Aton that sent me stuff. I'm going to try to prioritize it because obviously they want to get their name out there. Uh, I want to also do early impressions on Liz Moore's work, the Papillons that she was kind enough to send me. I did one we did the interview, and then there's still a bunch of other fragrances from her line that are just absolutely amazing that deserve being talked about. Um, you know, uh, so keep in mind, please be patient with me. I will get to it, but I like wearing the, the fragrance as my scent of the day. So some of these samples, like... Um, this is a sample of Inverno Roost that uh, Eddie sent me. You can see there's enough for probably a spray or two. But I'll have to do that, like, you know, before bed one day. I'll just have to spray it on, give you guys my early impression, and that's that kind of thing, you know? Um, but, uh, yes, I appreciate you watching. I love um, seeing your faces, comments, feedback, the, uh, the you know, uh, support you guys have given me for the channel is stunning. I mean, I feel like, uh, honestly, I said it in the in, in the video that I made from... The unboxing I did of Rachel's uh, first uh, decants, but I mean, I really feel like a rock star. You guys have made me feel like uh, a star doing this, and um, I, I have such knowledgeable, you know, subscribers. The first 1,500 subscribers I've had have been the real Fraghead subscribers, I feel like. So to those of you who have been here from the beginning, thank you very much. I very much appreciate it. More first and early impression videos to come. So cheers, everyone, and I'll see you again tomorrow with another video. Thanks, guys. Bye now.